Meghan Markle here. Okay, today is June 13th, 2023. It is 2.05 a.m. I'm hoping I finish read Harry's witness statement. I started it yesterday. I think I read like maybe four pages and I was feeling sleepy. So I want to finish with it today. Uh, and I think I left on page 39. To be sure, let me read the last paragraph on page 38. All right. And uh, that's paragraph 157. And hopefully I have the energy to finish okay so let's get started i really cannot understand how the defendant's journalists obtain such specific detail for this article however given what i know about dean roswell's activities i find it very suspicious i certainly wasn't discussing our relationship and this kind of details with anyone inside the palace giving the hours i was working at the time it's likely chelsea and i did exchange voicemails even more often than normal so i now believe that this information must have come from the hacking of our voicemail 113 hove harry's dumped sunday mirror 11 november 2007 joey griffin and nick owens 158 i mean as i read some of these and to see heavy highlighting some of those headlines is the audacity all right, the audacity these people have to feel free to just write these things and this is where uh, on my last video which I was recording earlier where IPSO you know this is where IPSO was supposed to be there to uh, to put these people the papers in place and Harry keeps on going to them uh, complaining and they ignore so these people felt comfortable they know nothing was going to happen to them. That's why they feel comfortable to be doing some of the things that they did. And this is why Harry no longer go to IPSO anymore and go straight to the court. Okay. 158. This article, which was published on page 9 of the Sunday Mirror, reports that Chelsea and I had split up and that I had been on a night out to drown my sorrows. The article featured a large photograph of me seemingly from the night out that the defendant was reporting on along with a small photograph of the nightclub I was at, another of my father and one of me kissing Chelsea's chick. It was co-authored by Zoe Griffin and Nick Owens. I understand that it has been shown in this litigation that Zoe Griffin was a commissioner of the private investigator firm Commercial and Legal Services and Mr. Owen was a user of Dan Hanks and a prolific user of Commercial and Legal Services. 159 along with the photograph the article reports my arrival time how i entered the club and who else was with me it's even report that i wasn't required to pay the entry fee this is another occasion of where the defendant journalists or paparazzi engaged by them seeming to know exactly where i was so they could be there at the right time to get their photos i did go to this particular nightclub amica and mayfair I feel like I read this already in a few occasions, but as I have said previously, my movement were never intended to be public knowledge. They were intentionally kept confidential for security reason. So how did they know? The whole narrative of the article seemed designed to make me look bad. It's another attack 
on me for doing what most of my military colleagues were doing, just enjoying an occasion night out. But it's only me that's under the microscope, having to endure all of the details being published to the whole country, even detail of the balance of the ta of the tab. I doubt that figure is accurate, but feels intended to me, looking irresponsible, frivolous. I always felt like the tabloids were hoping for something more, for me to get worse in some way to give them even more to say if I snap. Paragraph 160. Uh, what also strikes me about this article is the reference to the fallout between me and Chelsea. Again, how would they have known this? My solicitors have shown me an uh, invoice for the agency BDI, date 9 November 2007, with the subject Project Harry. I understand BDI are well known in this litigation for their unlawful activities, the timing of the invoice, and the fact the defendant's journalists produced such a detailed story in the Sunday edition of The Mirror about a night out that had happened on Friday makes me believe that they were undertaking unlawful activity to try and uncover personal detail about my relationship to include in the article to make more of a story. Paragraph 161. There were also a number of suspicious calls made to Paddy Harrison the day prior to the publication of the article on 10 November 2007. It is clear to me that MGN were digging around my associate in order to gather private information about me and his role as my father's communications secretary. He will have been the first to know if something newsworthy about my brother and or I had occurred good or bad and would in all likelihood been the one to have known the most about it. If they were assessing his voicemail, it is likely those messages contain extensive information about what actually happened or how it was being handled. 162. I have also been shown two contribution payment requests both date 11 November and 2007 which relate to this article. The first is to Exposure Photo Limited, 350 pounds, described as P11 Prince Harry's, and the second to Gacha Image for 75 pounds, described as uh, P11 Chelsea Davy. These both look like a payment to paparazzi. It's wonder that Chelsea and I constantly felt so harassed, although I'm still unclear as to how they knew where we were. Okay, 115 down in the dump mirror 12 november 2007 emily nash paragraph 163 this article was published on page 23 of the daily mirror and written by emily nash who i understand is known within this litigation as a commissioner of the pi firm i guess uh, private investigator firm commercial and legal services it include a large photograph of me and my fa fatigues at uh, a remembrance day service along with two smaller photographs one of chelsea another of the two of us together in the back of a vehicle it reports that chelsea had asked for a trial separation and an emotional phone call the week before the article was published and that i had only visited her once in leeds in the six weeks she had been living there uh, it also included a quote from a friend <laughs> there's a thing here their source that said we needed some time out but that we were likely to get back together okay 164 paragraph 164 again it's not clear to me how the defendant had this information or why they thought it was necessary to publish it if this article was published during one of the time we had split up it was clearly an upsetting time for both of us and I, I don't understand where the public interest is in exposing all of these personal and private details giving our strong desire to keep as much of our relationship private as possible we never confirmed to anyone outside of our closest friend that we had split up and do not believe any of them will have provided quotes to the defendant journalist if anything we did tell someone then appear and point we will not have uh, avoided telling them anything so personal again yet somehow the defendant was able to retrieve quote after quote from friend to include in this article giving i was likely to have exchanged voicemail with chelsea at this time discussing the difficulties in our relationship i now find this very suspicious 
Okay, 117, Harry met Chelsea, Sunday Mirror, 18 November, 2007, no byline. Paragraph 165, this article, which appear in a small column on the center of page 4 of the Irish edition of Sunday Mirror, was not attributed to a particular journalist and features the same small photograph of me and Chelsea in the back of a vehicle. It reports that Chelsea and I had a secret meeting where I had begged her for a second chance. It report that our two hour meeting had taken place at a mutual friend apartment in London. An uh, unidentified royal source is quoted as telling the Irish Sunday Mirror that I felt guilty that we had a string of arguments toward the end of our relationship and that we used to speak on the phone every day, but Chelsea refused to take my calls last week paragraph once i mean i'm telling you those people love to create drama it's like that fantasy thing they want to put the uh the people in but not seeing the reality of other things that's happening and you know in the real world you know the food crisis uh uh shit in their water is like a distraction to be mesmerized by by this particular i don't know i, I guess uh soap opera kind of thing my goodness 166 i don't recall this particular meeting but as i have said above we did have a few breaks up during the time we were together and i do believe one of them was when chelsea was studying in england if we had met at a friend apartment it would have been someone we trusted implicitly so i don't believe anyone will have provided any detail of the defendant journalist uh, either here or in ireland any secret meeting to make up with my girlfriend or the number of times we spoke on the phone or the fact she was refusing to take my call was not something i will have told anyone at the palace either so who the royal source is is very unclear to me given what i know now about the practices employed by the defendant's journalist i believe the detail regarding our phone calls are more likely to have come from itemized phone record obtained by them Paragraph 167, these kinds of articles made me feel as though my relationship with Chelsea was always said to be doomed. We couldn't even meet in private or have argument over the telephone without the defendant somehow learning this detail and publishing them for the whole country to see. Again, it was just that feeling of being under surveillance all the time. I believe Chelsea found this even more difficult to deal with when she lived in England. Even if she was reading the newspaper, others around her were, uh, and everyone has a limit as to what they can endure. Okay, 119, back together, mirror, 20 November 2007, Fiona Cummings. Paragraph 168, this article published on page 3 of the mirror and written by Fiona Cummings, who I understand know in this litigation as a prolific commissioner of private investigators including ELI, search line and commercial and legal, service, legal services, is marked as an exclusive. It reveals that Chelsea and I were back together again. Uh, we're back together again after I repeatedly begged her to take me back and that I had bombarded her with texts and phone calls uh, apologizing for the antics that caused the split. It also states we had two hour love <laughs> It also states we had two hour love summit over the weekend. It includes a quote from a unidentified pal. Oh my God. That I had uh, pestered her with texts and calls, the article also said that the reason Chelsea broke off our relationship was because she found texts from another girl on my phone. Uh, 169, the level of detail regarding our phone communication is shocking and so blatant. While I can't recall the specific details of the state of our relationship at this time, it's highly unlikely I told anyone the detail of the way I was trying to patch things up with Chelsea. It's hardly flattering to be contacting someone so much it could be described as pestering them. 
okay i have no idea who the power referred to could be or how they will know the information that is attributed to them it seems highly suspicious we also then have the kind of relationship where we check each other's phone <laughs> there's that here so the reference to that being the reason chelsea broke up with me is also confusing or perhaps deliberate damaging it seems to me that the defendant journalist may have seen a new number in my phone record oh my goodness and my phone record and put two and two together to make five <laughs> or just a juicier story 170 once again this article has a brief quote at the end which attributes to a clarence house spokesperson saying they don't comment on our personal lives this shows the information was put to them by the defendant journalist for comment but where did that information come from in the first place paragraph 171 the paddy haverson call data shows a suspicious call made to him on 19 november 2007 the day before this article was published again it is obvious to me that mgn were digging around the phone of my associates unlawfully to gather private information about me oh my goodness okay 120 er okay if i drop you off here sunday mirror to december 2007 by Susie boniface paragraph 172 this article which appeared on page 28 of the sunday mirror marked as an exclusive was written by Susie boniface i understand from my solicitor that Susie boniface was a prolific commissioner of private investigators including tdi eli jonathan stafford and commercial and legal services the article includes a large close-up photograph of chelsea walking away from my car in a driveway of the ground of kensington palace it reveals the photograph is proof that we were back together it reports that chelsea had spent the night at kensington palace and that i had dropped her off hoping not to be seen 173 when my solicitors show me this article i recognized the photograph immediately it was taken through the archway that leads on the kensington high street but still within the private road of kensington palace there weren't routinely photographers waiting at this entrance unless something big was happening what i'm thinking here remember that the video of uh, william yelling at that guy um where he was riding his bike with his kids you could hear kate in the background or something i'm wondering if it's that same private wood you can have this altercation i know i know i just realized who it was and i've just you I didn't stopped you're right looking for us don't i was actually don't pass us outside our house, I you. no i didn't i've been near the house i've not been i promise you i've not been near your house I'm not gonna lie. Yes, you are. How dare you behave like you've done my children? How I dare you? I have not. I have not you done anything. You're around here looking for us and our children. I went for a I'm quiet walk. bike ride with my children on That's Saturday, fine. Fine. and you won't give me your name. You're outrageous. You're disgusting. You really are. And you can have this altercation. All right, there weren't routinely photographers waiting at this entrance unless something big was happening. The reason I had dropped her off where I did was to avoid any members of the public seeing us by chance. So, what are the chances of someone waiting at the archway at the specific moment I drop her off with a camera ready? Okay, 174. My solicitor have shown me a private investigator invoice from Newsreel UK for 500 pound giving what i have been told about newsreel activities i find this highly suspicious i have also been shown various other contribution payment requests including a payment to jason hedges for 360 pound regarding 112 chelsea watch another to maliton meager for 360 pound regarding 112 chelsea watch another to spot beat images ltd picks only for 180 pound regarding prince harry at the rugby another to ken goff for 75 pound regarding p1 prince harry and a final one to matrix syndication for 34 pound regarding p11 prince harry giving how little there really is to the story it is mind-boggling the amount of inquiries and payment mgn had made okay one six one twenty six i mean was all this payment worth it do they make any profit from all of this crazy headline they're writing my goodness 
this odd this short article which was published in a column on the left hand side of page six of the mirror is not attributed to any particular journalist okay it reports that i had had my mobile phone stolen from a nightclub in losoto before being returned to me two days later it states that my contact and text were not accessed as they were password protected okay 176 i remember this incident so clearly i was pickpocketed i suspected i was targeted nothing about it felt up uh, opportunistic it felt so smooth so calculated and so clever my first worry when i realized it was gone that uh, very private and personal text messages were going to be splashed across the newspaper i knew it was likely the british press including the defendant will know where i was as they always did i could never relax oh my god this is the thing here i could never relax wow i could never relax a very simple uh a very simple sentence this is the thing i always felt for him he could never relax even in the car and the harry and megan documentary where both of them were in the car they consistently turning around looking around to see who's following them wow this is why he was looking for the happiness he was searching for the family back from all i have ever known to take a, to take a step forward into what i hope can be a more peaceful life uh, why i knew the institution could wipe out device remotely ah okay i knew the institution could wipe our devices remotely but i was still worried i don't understand how the defendant journalist could know that my contact or text weren't access access wow i'm not even sure i knew that giving the phone was missing for a few days wow <laughs> All right, 127, Soldier Harry's Taliban. The People, 28 September 2008, Dean Roswell, Royal Editor. Paragraph 177. Okay, this article, which appeared on page 19 of The People, was written by Dean Roswell and marked as an exclusive. The article reveals that I had been banned from returning to service in Afghanistan as it will present an unacceptable risk to me and my comrades, but the possibility of serving in Iraq had not been ruled out. It includes a quote from an unidentified source that said, I was being let down gently because I believe there was a vital job to be done in Afghanistan and that while my family and regiment believe I had proved myself, I was worried I would look like a lightweight soldier. 178. I had been withdrawn from Afghanistan in March 2008 because of the security threat by my regiment faced. There was supposed to be a press embargo and another attempt to keep this in place. It had been agreed that subject to certain detail being kept strictly confidential some members of the british media would join me for a period to take exclusive photographs and footage even in a war zone i can escape the media unfortunately we've seen some of the reporting of what he's talking about unfortunately an australian journalist revealed my location and an american website broke the press embargo a target had been placed on my head and i was withdrawn okay one paragraph 179 defendant's journalist was right to say i was desperate to get back i was doing everything i could to be allowed to serve again i wanted to do a full tour i was frustrated i was speaking to those close to me about this often over the phone i really did want those close to me to know i wanted to get back i wanted my family to understand how important it was for me to serve again all of this is accurately reported by the defendant to have any chance of being allowed to serve again i had to get the right people to agree and fight my corner this include uh, this is a smart person talking here okay this including speaking to my private secretary jamie lothar pinkerton who did escalate the matter however articles like this did not help and it's not clear to me who the source will be 
that the defendant quotes everyone I spoke to knew the importance of discretion and that media reporting was the whole reason I had been withdrawn. I don't believe anyone who had the detail contained within the articles would want to jeopardize my career by speaking about it. So I find this exclusive article to be highly suspicious, especially as my solicitors have shown me a contribution request payment made to Rob Palmer on 28th September 2008 and the sum of 500 pounds. The description for the payment reads heavy Afghan tour blacked, which clearly relates to this article. Again, it is obvious that MGN commissioned inquiries to obtain private details about me using unlawful means, the impact this kind of thing had on my career, my drive, and my mental health is so upsetting. You know, one of the things that I, as I'm reading this witness statement, it pretty much highlight Harry's uh, sort of, uh, I guess it's like a autobiography, okay, similar to Spare. But this one, remember how the tabloid and some part of his family, in my humble opinion, wanted to write a different type of history about him. So now he is documenting it in court. This can, I don't know, we can never say never, but um, I would assume this court statement where it is being recorded and uh, legally binded, uh, it's pretty much telling, uh, not telling out, yeah, in a way telling, but uh, documenting his life story and his uh, experiment, um, his life experience, that's the thing, his life uh, story, so nobody can erase that. That's the way that I see this. It's almost too similar to spare, but this is a different aspect of it. And also responding to the articles that was written about him. And uh, I didn't read any of the articles he mentioned, but I would assume, there he is, he's correcting them, but they probably answered some fantasy aspect of it that may not be true. But there he is, is correcting it. I, I, I don't know if I'm making sense. It's, it seems like he's correcting uh, his history so that way people will know the truth. So anyone who wish to write a, a biography about Harry or anything can easily, I don't know if they do that in the UK, where you buy the uh, transcript and then you could quote him based on what he says in court. And it's legally bind it because it's him presenting it sign it and uh yeah i don't know if i make sense with that but anyway let's get back to the original recording 130 uh quote he just loved boozing and army she is fed up and heading home sunday mirror 25 january 2009 grand had son Paragraph 180, this article, which appear on page 3 of the Sunday Mirror, features a large paparazzi shot of Chelsea in a bikini on the beach, along with some smaller historic photographs of us together. It's marked as an exclusive and is written by Grant Hudson. I understand that Grant Hudson was a regular commissioner of private investigators, including ELI, and commercial and legal services. Once again, it is reported that Chelsea and I had split up with the reason that I love the army more than her. Yeah, I remember seeing something like that. It reveals that we had several tense meetings the week before and that she decided to call it a day. It included a comment from a friend that the final straw for her was me signing up to a helicopter pilot training course as it will leave so little time for a serious relationship. Other details report includes that I was understood to have spoken to my father about my relationship with Chelsea before taking on the helicopter training that Chelsea was planning to return to South Africa to do corporate law there and that we had scrapped plans to travel to South Africa together after New Year after having rules while we were away in Mauritius. 181. My solicitors have shown me another payment to Newsreel for Chelsea and Harry Assist, that's in quote by the way, which appeared to relate to this article as it dated the day before publication. It seems clear to me that the defendant journalist did not obtain this exclusive story from lawful means. There is also payment to Rob Palmer for £500 entitled Heavy Booze Bungles. Okay, paragraph 182 also shown me is call data to Chelsea Mobile 
where there were three calls made by MGN journalists to her phone on 24 uh, January 2009. Chelsea will not have given her number to any journalists, let alone speak to them. Seeing the call data and black and white just makes me realize how much the defendant's journalists will have heard is violating. Every relationship has its challenges, but they are private, just clearly not for us. All right, 132, I'm on page 45 now. Okay, 132, 3 a.m., wide away heavy on mirror 26, March 2009, Clemmy Moody and Daniel Lawler. Paragraph 183, this article took center page of the mirrors 3 a.m. column on page 13. It included a small picture of me along with, with a photograph of Astrid Harbor. I understand the 3 a.m. girls of which Clement Moody and Daniel Lawler were the 2009 incarnation are well known in this litigation for the fact that the column published stories admitting by MGN to have been the product of unlawful activities as I have set out above. It reported that I have been to watch the rugby at uh, uh, was it Twickenham with Astrid who they report was my girlfriend. The court a spy as saying Astrid and I have been on a few secret dates over the past three weeks as well as reporting that she had spent the night at Clarence House. 184. A lot of details in this article are, co are incorrect. Astrid was a close friend of mine. She was never my girlfriend. It seems to me the defendant was either trying to create a story or they had got the wrong end of the stick. Astrid and I were in regular contact. We text and exchange calls and voicemails as we were in the same circle of friends and spent a lot of time together. This kind of article from the defendant was just embarrassing for me. Friends teasing me, it create an awkwardness between me and uh, whichever girl was at the subject of the story. I have been shown six payment to private investigator, commercial and legal, made on 7 March 2009, which relate to Astrid, which shows that she was a prior ent entrance to the mirror. As I'm reading this, I'm thinking, <laughs> Harry didn't tell Megan any of this. This is why some of uh, Megan's friend was telling her, don't get involved. Luckily, she listened to her. I think Megan was literally sent to get Harry out of there because these people, my goodness. All right, 133, Harry's date with Gladiator Star, the people, 19 April 2009, KD Hen. 185, paragraph 185. I'm starting to get tired now. I don't want to come back to this. I want to finish it. 185. This article, which appeared on page 15 of The People, was written by Katie Hen. I understand she is well known in this litigation for being a regular user of private investigators, Rob Palmer, and commercial and legal services. Huh. Rob Palmer. Okay. The article is marked both as an exclusive and a picture exclusive as it carries two photographs of me and the well-known television personality Caroline Flack, may she rest in peace, together on a street in Fairham, London. The photographs were taken at night. The article report that I had dashed from my helicopter training in Lincolnshire to be with Caroline where we joined our friend for a lively dinner party. It, re it reports we left the house after midnight with an onlooker who I believe to be the paparazzi who were hiding, saying we look very happy together. 186. I remember this article, these photographs so clearly because at the time I was so shocked and livid that uh, the two photographers from I was it I K O N pictures knew where we will be and uh, were already there waiting for us to arrive. My goodness, they were hiding underneath a car. Oh my God, they were hiding underneath a car. These photographers became known to me as there were numerous highly suspicious and often dangerous incidents involving them. 187, uh, paragraph 187, the photographs are taken outside of Mark Dyer's apartment. We had a poker night and the article is correct that I had rushed back on a Friday evening from Lincolnshire to join the night and had invited Caroline alone. 
Caroline and I had been in contact for a couple of weeks as Caroline was always of great interest to the tabloid. She was often hounded by them. Oh my goodness. Uh, we had expected that meeting at uh, Marcos would be low key and private. It was only the second time we met in person. I think Marco and I had exchanged voicemail about the night we had planned and given the way I left, there's no way I could have been followed coming down from Lincolnshire. Only Marco, Caroline and I knew of the plans. There was only a couple of other people invited and I don't think they knew that Caroline would be joining us. Hmm. 188, oh my goodness. Just a friendly get together and then my goodness. Yeah, he can never be relaxed. Okay, paragraph 188. Giving the fact only three of us knew the plan, I was highly suspicious of and convinced someone had leaked the information to the press, I was angry. I hadn't told anybody. I obviously doubt Caroline, but I even came to distrust Marco. My brother and I stopped talking to him for a while as we just uh, couldn't understand her stories about us meeting privately with him ended up in the papers or her photographers will end up outside his apartment. I now believe this information had come from our voicemail mine marco or caroline's the impact these kinds of stories had on my relationship cannot be underestimated even those i trusted the most i ended up doubting wow 134 i think marco was uh, also in uh, the book spare he mentioned it 134 chelsea's new fella the people 26 april 2009 katie Hang. Paragraph 189, this article, which was published on page 9 of the people in the left-hand column, featured a photograph of Chelsea outside a club and another small headshot of me. It is written by Katie Hen, who I understand is well known in this litigation for being a regular user of the private investigators Rob Palmer and commercial and legal services. The article reports that I had been bombarded Chelsea with calls in an attempt to win her back and that uh, she had told me that uh, she had found someone else. It reports that we were both out with friends at clubs around the same location and includes a quote from an onlooker. <laughs> on oh, looker they find anybody to just throw in the mix okay that said chelsea had three bouncers guarding the door of her vip room as she was worried about the scene the article also included a quote from an unidentified close pal of chelsea that said i had begged chelsea to take me back oh my god one, paragraph 190 chelsea and i were separated at this point in time i don't recall this specific night or occasion but the report of the calls between us feel very suspicious to me again this is not the kind of information that is flattering to me I would not tell anyone if I was calling Chelsea regularly and giving the way Chelsea has also been guarded with who she tells information to. I have no idea who the close pal could be that the defendant journalists are attributing some of the information to. My mirror group claim. All right. Paragraph 191. I fully accept and agree with the fact that journalists and the media on the public square and as much as if you are in a position of responsibility and or are funded by the taxpayer, the media should have the power to be able to investigate anyone, anytime, for pretty much anything. The problem is that over the last 15 to 20 years, there are now incredible powerful media companies who masquerade as journalists. Wow, this is the very powerful here. Okay, there are now incredible powerful media companies who masquerade as journalists and who have quite literally hijacked journalistic privileges that their own personal gain and agenda okay hijack journalistic privileges for their own personal gain and agenda it's an unbelievable dangerous place i believe it doesn't matter whether you are a public figure at this point Whoever you are, if you are of interest to the press at that time, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're in private or if you're public, you are a target. You become a victim of their system. They claim to hold public figure to account, but refuse to hold themselves accountable. There's that IPSO thing here. All right. They 
quickly buffer themselves to be the safeguard of journalistic. Meanwhile, it's just the same thing to turn a blind eye. My goodness, if they are supposed policing society, who on earth is policing them? Whenever the government is scared of alienating them because of position is power, it is incredibly worrying for the entire UK. There he is, he is speaking on behalf of the people. Okay, it doesn't matter who you are. These people, if they interest in you, they want free will to run rampage anything they want about you. So this is the thing that you can needs to understand. All right, and then the U.S. need to make sure they don't bring this BS over here. Okay, 192. In my view, in order to save journalism as a profession, journalists need to expose those people and media that have stolen or hijacked the privileges and powers of the press and have used illegal or unlawful means for their own gain and agendas. This is why that Brian Cape Cod article I wanted to read because he wanted to know what's going on with IPSO regarding that, uh, uh, was it Jeremy Clarkson thing? They were supposed to do something about it. My feeling is that they're waiting for this uh, lawsuit to finish to see which way they could go. Uh, they need to remove whoever is behind. Okay, the idea of IPSO is good, but the people's running it need to be out of there. All right, they need to be out of there and be held accountable for their position that they are in. Okay, in the same vein, I am bringing this claim not because I hate the tabloid press or even necessarily a section of it, but in order to properly hold the people who have hijacked those privileges which come with being a member of the press to account for their action. Yeah, he's saying, look, I'm bringing this because these people are doing this unlawfully and then take, is like water down, okay, water down journalism. So they need to be held accountable. Uh, if they know there's consequences for their action, they will not do it. And this is why I respect uh, Omid very highly because at that time, when none of this were coming out, those uh, royal rats was running rampant and they were making money left and right, but he didn't take the bait. He didn't do it. Okay? And that's why they hate him for it. 193. This has become a huge problem of which I have a unique perspective and experience perhaps having had a front row seat to it because they have showed no willingness to change. I feel that I need to make sure that this unlawful behavior is exposed because obviously I don't want anybody else going through the same thing that I have been going through on a personal level. This is the thing where his father's telling him just because I went through it, therefore you must go through it. And it all comes back to the same people, the same business model, the same industry. Because my father used to say to me when I was younger, he used to say to both William and I, well, it was like that for me, so it's going to be like that for you. Because they have showed no willingness to change, I feel that I need to make sure that this unlawful behavior is exposed. Just because you suffered, that doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer. Because obviously, I don't want anybody else going through the same thing that I have been going through on a personal level. In fact, quite the opposite. If you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, that you can make it right for your kids. Harry knows the pain of it. Okay? The feeling of not being relaxed all the time. So he doesn't want people to go through the same thing. And this is why he's bringing. And then you have all people who's coming out that Harry should not be doing that. He's uh, like messing up the court system, using it for his gain. I mean, the court system is there for anybody. I actually think this is a car crash uh, for British justice, for the British justice system, because this is actually quite laughable what is happening here if it wasn't so serious. The Prince Harry, in my opinion, is damaging the institution. That is the British legal system. Because he's using it and abusing it. And you are completely right when you were talking about the influence of lawyers keeping this alive because they have made millions. They 
have made millions. Just because you suffered, that doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer. They have made millions. In fact, quite the opposite. If you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, that you can make it right for your kids. I actually think this is a car crash uh, for British justice. I actually think this is a car crash uh, for British justice, for the British justice system, because this is actually quite laughable what is happening here, if it wasn't so serious. The Prince Harry, in my opinion, is damaging the institution that is the British legal system. The Prince Harry, in my opinion, is damaging the institution that is the British legal system. The Prince Harry, in my opinion, is damaging the institution that is the British legal system. Because he's using it and abusing it. And you are completely right when you were talking about the influence of lawyers keeping this alive, because they have made millions. I actually think this is a car crash uh, for British justice. I, if you have a claim and you could prove it, you could bring anything up, but these people, they undermining Harry. And I agree with Harry here. Okay. But also on a national level, as at the moment, our country is judged globally. That's the key part. I've heard this before. Our country is judged globally by the state of our press and our government. He is 1000% right. He is right on this. Both of which I believe are at rock bottom. Democracy fails when your press fails to scrutinize and hold the government accountable and instead choose to get into bed with them so they can ensure the status quo. I may not have a role within the institution, but as a member of the British royal family and as a soldier upholding important values, I feel there's a responsibility to expose this criminal activity in the name of public interest. He is right. He is right. This is of public interest. Even when Megan's uh, lawsuit was going on, and I'm like, if Megan um, lose that case, people in the UK is gonna be in, be in big trouble. That will give them the license to do whatever they want with your information. And there's Harry's doing the same thing. It's of great public interest. It is for the rest of the people. All right, the country and the British public deserve to know the depth of what was actually happening then and indeed now we will be better off for it. That is true. Okay, paragraph 194. Unfortunately, as a consequence of me bringing my mirror group claim, both myself and my wife have been subjected to a barrage of horrific personal attack and intimidation from Pierce Morgan. Uh-oh. There he is. He bring it now here from Pierce Morgan, who was the editor of the Daily Mirror between 1995 and 2004. Presumably the retaliation and in the hope that I will back down before being able to hold him properly accountable for his unlawful activity toward both me and my mother during his editorship. There's heavy fighting for his mom. Oh my goodness. Princess Diana, please advocate for your son. Tell the Lord to protect them because the other one who was supposed to do that, he had more power than Harry to do that. But instead he threw you under the bus. So advocate for your son and his little family down here. All right. Board and legal department knowledge. Paragraph 195. My view is how, you know what I realize here before he bring, um, Pierce Morgan name into this. This is where he said he bring the case here and said, this is of great public interest. All right. And then, boom, there's uh, uh, Pierce Morgan he mentioned here. Okay, paragraph 195. My view is how can anybody possibly trust a media organization that enjoys the liberties of free press when their own legal people and board covers up the truth?
and they have the powers that they have and where even the police and the government are scared to hold them accountable or seek justice against them. They can truly believe they are above the law and if they're above the law, then it's the general public that suffer. It's really that simple. 196, paragraph 196, it does make you feel completely helpless and hopeless. Yeah, I could feel that for him when he complained to IPSO and then they just turned a blind eye and said the paper didn't do anything wrong. So I could feel that for him. Okay, not that I want to, but you could have the perspective of that. Okay, it does make you feel completely helpless and hopeless. And if that's how it feels to someone in my position, having grown up with advisors and secretaries to try and manage press relation, I can only imagine what that feels like for everybody else. Just because you suffered, that doesn't mean that your kids have to suffer. If I had known this cover up was going on back in the day, I would have been disgusted and would have tried to seek some kind of a justice. In fact, quite the opposite. If you suffered, do everything you can to make sure that whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, that you can make it right for your kids. Although I suspect I will have got very far, however, having experienced what I have over the last six years in terms of the constant harassment online and off, intimidation and abuse that my wife and I have suffered at the hand of the tabloid, this sort of appalling behavior doesn't really surprise me. Unfortunately, without proper press regulation, which is current government clearly have no appetite for because their friends and the press said so. It's, my goodness. Okay, it's only going to get worse. He is right. Okay, paragraph 197. Finding out about this level of cover up is what makes me want to see my MGN claim through to the end. That whatever experiences you, negative experiences that you had, that you can make it right for your kids. There's, this is why he didn't take the money. Because this is just too much. All right, so people can really understand what happened. The fact that it was not just the journalists who were carrying out the unlawful activity, but also those in power who were turning a blind eye to it so as to ensure that it will continue unabated and who then tried to cover it up when the game was up is appalling. The fact they all ganging up to protect each other, that, that's it. Like they first did after Levison is the most disturbing part of it all, especially as they're the mothership of online trolling. Wow. Trolls react and mobilize to stories they create. People have died. That's true. People have died as a result and people will continue to kill themselves by suicide when they can't see any other way out. How much more blood will stain their typing fingers before someone can put a stop to this madness. Wow. This is very powerful. And this is why um, Caroline Flack mother is a... Uh, you know, it's for Harry because this is also advocate for Caroline Flack because they were bombarding her and she didn't know what to do. Can you imagine that? My goodness. It's like being a prison within a prison within a prison and you don't know how to get out. Okay. Conclusion. Paragraph 198. My solicitor have shown me a witness statement from the Daily Mirror former royal reporter Jane Kerr, who I believe that's the one the... That's the woman, the judge, I think I could be wrong. And I have a clip, I'll find out. Or at least what I'm thinking of. The judge had uh, forced to come to court. I think they had subpoena her, she didn't show up. They asked her to come, she didn't show up. But the judge had, you know, so demanded her to show up. 
After the Duke of Sussex finished giving evidence, the Mirror's former royal correspondent Jane Kerr was sworn in. The Mirror's former royal correspondent Jane Kerr was sworn in. Records suggest she commissioned private investigators at least 900 times to find out people's personal information. Prince Harry's lawyer, David Sherborne, asked her, you didn't want to come to court, did you? She answered, no. Well, there are three ways that, that a witness can turn up to a, to a court. One, voluntarily. Two, by subpoena, which is the other side getting a court order to turn up. But what's happened here is neither of those first two, that the judge himself has ordered her to turn up. So the reason why she's giving evidence is because the judge of his own volition has ordered her to come. How unusual is that? Well, I, I can't honestly remember ever that ever happening before. It's quite extraordinary. Jane Kerr, who I understand is bylined and only 10 of the 50 selected articles about which I complain, uh, it will appear from her comments that in most cases, she can neither recall the story nor its source. I have also been shown a witness statement by Martin Fricker, who is not bylined in any of the selected article, but does confirm that he neither recollects the story to which he is bylined which is outside the selected 50, no its source. Okay, paragraph 199. I note that there is a witness statement from either Dean Waswell, who is byline in 10 of the 15 selected article, or from any of the other 31 journalists who are byline in those article, although I understand that they are not obliged to come and give evidence. I find it absolutely appalling that these people refuse to do so or subject themselves to cross-examine, especially as I have been forced to relive a horrific period in my life in order to prepare this witness statement and will be only too pleased to subject myself to cross-examine and quote. This cowardice speaks volume and I don't understand how they are allowed to hide. And I guess this is why one of the uh, Jane Kerr the judge uh, requests her to come. All right, 200, paragraph 200, uh, last one. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why I'm bringing this claim is to hold people to account for what they have done so that they can't hide behind their own institution or organization. As I am subject myself to the court process, I fully expect the journalists and question to also come along and explain how they wrote those stories because on on the one hand, MGN admit that phone hacking and other unlawful information gathering went on, but on the other, they deny liability for every claim that's been brought against them, including my own. They admit people were doing it, but deny the victim claims. Their position makes no sense, and I am determined to get to the bottom of it once and for all. All right, let's see here. Statement of truth. All right. I believe that the facts stated in this witness statement are true. I understand that process for contempt of court may be brought against anyone who makes or causes to be made a false statement and a document, document verified, verified by, by a statement, statement of truth of without, truth without any, honest any honest belief, belief, belief and it's true. Right, so that's right, his, so that's uh, his uh, signature, signature here. here. Uh, 24, uh, 24 February 2023. It's funny, it's funny because, because uh, uh, the whole thing, the is, whole thing, not whole thing is not funny. But what I'm, but thinking, what I'm is thinking is that, is that I, remember I remember saying, saying I could see Harry's lawyer going through the papers and then bring it up to his attention to see if it's something is worth uh, bringing to court. Oh my goodness, I just can't believe I thought of this and then this pretty much probably went in that sense. All right, and the last pages is here, confirmation of compliance. Actually, there's more. Okay, I understand the purpose of this witness statement is to set out matters of fact of which I have personally allowed personal knowledge i understand that it is not my function to argue the case either generally or particular point or to take the court through the document and the case this witness statement set out only my personal knowledge and recollection and my own words on point that i understand to be important in the case i have stated honestly how well I recall matters and B, whether my memory has been refreshed by considering documents, if so, how and when. All right. I have not been asked or encouraged by anyone to include this statement, anything that is not my own account, to the best of my ability and recollection of events I witnessed or matters 
of which I have personal knowledge. There's his signature again. Okay, certify. Okay, so that's that here. These are extra. So these are the documents uh, he submitted. All right. A whole bunch, 70 of them. My goodness. And I think they went over each one of them too. All right, so that's it. I read it all. Phew, thank God. Now I could take my time whenever I have the, uh, the time to edit them. Okay, so that's it. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. If you want to support this channel, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. You could donate. Those who have donated, thank you. And I think I will be putting these um, because there's different section. I didn't sit and read it in one day. Um, I will put them, those videos, and um, playlists. Okay? So check out for the playlist where all of them will be. Okay? So that's it. And they all are numbered, I believe, 166. All of them have 166, but different parts. And I think I'm up to part, which one did I upload? Okay, part two, there's part three, is that it? Yeah, nope, that's not it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, had, I haven't uh, uploaded any one yet. Where's 166? Okay, these, they have only Harry on the, on the thumbnails, all right, with the suit working in. All of them going to have different images of Harry walking to court or leaving court. Okay. Yeah. Is uh, season three, episode 166. So ep episode 166 have different parts. All right. Because it's the same uh, witness statement. It's just that I read them different times and uh, I can sit in one sitting and read it all. All right. So that's it. Thank you. And uh, that's it. <laughs>